Uh, my name is Sally Ono Sudo. I was born in Seattle, Washington in 1935. Yes, I'm the ninth of 10 children. So very large family. We lived in an area in Seattle that was called Nihon Machi, which means Japantown, because in those days, uh, really, there were very much segregated neighborhoods for people of color and uh, not necessarily, but by, uh, you know, because of choice. So we were living there peacefully. I went through um, kindergarten at the local public school. And actually it was during uh, December of that year that I was in kindergarten that uh, Pearl Harbor happened. And that's really what caused the, I would say, pivotal uh, incident in our family that really created the big change that was about to occur. All of us children were born in the United States. We were United States citizens. But uh, when President Roosevelt signed the executive order just a few months later in February of uh, 1942, signs went up in our neighborhood, letting us know we were living in a military zone. Also that we should get ready uh, to be moved out of the zone. So we went into a prison camp at Puyallup, Washington. It was a very chaotic time. We were only allowed to bring what we could carry. We were not able to sell very much. Most of it was uh, left behind or just given away. So it was really a tremendous financial loss to families. There were 10 permanent camps that were built, and uh, by the fall of 1942, they put us aboard trains and told us we were being moved to one of the permanent camps, which ended up being uh, in the middle of the Idaho desert in a place called Minidoka, Idaho. And we were there in Idaho for over three years. As a child, things became very normal to me. You know, at least our family was all together and uh, I felt safe. And the only thing personally that I think in the way that it affected me was I rationalized in my head that if this is happening to me only because I'm Japanese, there must be something terribly wrong with being a Japanese. And so that kind of stuck with me all the way through my childhood, uh, being ashamed of my own culture. And I know, especially after getting out of the camp, uh, I tried to become, you know, like as American as possible. Uh, in fact, um, my legal name is Shigeo, but I dropped that right away as soon as I could. And I was called Sally ever since uh, getting out of the camps. Uh, the war ended <clears throat> and the camps were being closed. Our family was really in a dilemma because we didn't know what to do. And it was only because I had a brother that had volunteered to serve in the U.S. military and he was uh, selected to be in the military intelligence service which had its training here in Minnesota. And so it was my brother that talked my father into bringing the rest of the family out here. You know, in Seattle, we're in a segregated neighborhood with many Japanese neighbors. In the camps, we're with all Japanese people. And now we come to Minnesota and we're one of the rare Japanese families. And I think every morning I have to say that I got up and went off to school, I was conscious of my Japanese-ness, that I was different from the others, and therefore I was very um, shy about it. I never spoke out in class. Uh, in fact, that was one of the remarks on my report card. Uh, I wish Sally would speak up more in class. I'm sure she has a lot to offer. But 
you know, when you're in my situation, all you want to do is blend into the background and fit in. It's interesting how um, nowadays when I run into old high school classmates, for instance, they had absolutely no idea of my background, the fact that I had lived those few years in an American prison camp. And they're kind of shocked to hear that. Well, I think the fact that uh, this is the Midwest, that that part of history really wasn't as well known as it would have been if we were living on the West Coast. And so when they didn't learn about it in school at all, you know, that they, they really um, hadn't thought about that at all. I myself really became more interested in actually what happened to us after I got out of high school and into college, where I was able to meet more Japanese Americans like myself at the University of Minnesota, and then uh, to learn, you know, that here we have these common experiences, um, many of them having been in some of the same camps that I was in. Then I think is when it really struck me the injustice of it all. You know, we used to have at least a half a dozen or more people that would be willing to go out and talk about the subject. But as time went on, uh, more and more of them passed away and I happened to be one of the younger ones. So now there are very few of us left and it's gonna be up to the next generations to carry on that story. Well, I think um, since the um, pandemic you know, of COVID uh, that we've been experiencing over the last three years, uh, there's been a really a huge rise in anti-Asian uh, racism and hate crimes. And so I think that probably it has been under the surface all these years because really, um, as soon as Asians immigrated to this country, they've experienced this racism. But uh, for many years, uh, it, it hasn't come to the surface. And it's probably the fact that when you have an incident, uh, you know, like Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or this pandemic, you've got to look to somebody to blame. And the fact that people understand that this um, pandemic started in China, now they're going to blame the Asian people. And so anybody who's Asian, you know, must be the cause of this. And that's how all this starts. Uh, when we first moved to Minnesota, a person like me would have never been allowed to even live in Edina. Uh, I'm in a senior home now that is located in Edina, and uh, I was telling the residents there recently about the fact that uh, it wasn't until after 1965 that Edina allowed more people like me to live here, and there were many of them that were surprised. They said, I had no idea. Now, as far as my own experience, I feel very accepted in the community. I just am happy to see how things have improved over the years, especially um, when I think of my grandchildren or eventually my great-grandchildren. I think things get better with every generation. And so uh, those who are always the newest to the country seem to be the scapegoats of whatever discrimination there is at the time, and it takes a generation or two for them to overcome that. So I think things are going in the right direction.